I just want to thank you for joining us tonight with the worship at your home and a short devotion. We ask that you join us in worship. You know, I know that in this time, we're weary, but when we look up, He is our helper and our God is our present help in everything that we need. So God, we look to you.
to have joined us today. Thank you so much for coming and taking the time to be with us for our service this evening. Um, a pastor asked me to share a devotion with you guys. And so I hope that um, even though I'm filming from home because I'm in quarantine, uh, know that all is well. It's just a little bit different than being in the church and filming that there. Um, so please bear with us with all of the technical issues and uh, just wanted to say that we love you and we just appreciate you joining us. And as many of you know, this world has gone a little bit crazy. Um, when we look around and we um, notice the news and we notice things around us um, that are just not what it used to be. Um, God is not surprised, first of all. He is not surprised. But he laid these scriptures on my heart. So turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 5 through 7. And I'm going to read this um, with you. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5 through 7. Um, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road and when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. And I just wanted to um, bring these things to our attention today. I think that sometimes we need to be reminded um, of the things that are going on around us. And, you know, I, I am reminded about the... Um, the scripture, um, I mean, the song that says, uh, you know, he's God of the city. We want him to be God of the city. Don't we, we want him to be God of our nation? But God prompted me during these couple of days that I had to prepare for this message that God cannot be God of our world. He cannot be God of our city. He cannot be God of our nation unless he is first God of our families and God over our own lives. Um, you know, we we know the scripture that says humble yourselves and pray and have you noticed with me that God um, God's word is always a condition there's always a you know a what or a when or a but or an if because God's conditions does not line up to just whatever we want um, his conditions are his conditions and it doesn't change not from thousands of years ago to today it doesn't change it doesn't change because our environment changes our culture changes our people change our children change our workplaces change that doesn't that doesn't surprise God but he says in that scripture trust the Lord with all your heart and and be wholeheartedly committed to him and then teach your children. And as you look over the scripture over and over in the Old Testament, especially God is reminding the Israelites that we have to teach our children. It is our responsibility to teach our children, to teach our families, to teach those around us um, his word and what his scripture says, not only by bringing them to church, because as you know, many of you have not been able to come to church. Many of you um, have had watched church from your home. Many of you watch it after the children go to bed. I'm just encouraging you today. Let's do what the Word of God tells us to do. If we want to see our nation healed, if we want to see our cities healed, if we want to see our families healed, if we want to build a strong culture in our young people, um, we must wholeheartedly commit ourselves to God. I was reminded... Um, of a story we'll just name him um johnny little johnny was um his mom and dad always thought that it was really the best thing that they could do to bring him to church and their mom and dad uh his mom and dad was um excited because they thought that would um that would give them a good fam family strong unit it would uh, give them a strong marriage and all of those things are possible church is is a help uh a time that we can get together with our friends, that we can come together and learn and grow and all of those things. But it can't start at church. It has to start in you. It has to start in each one of us acknowledging wholeheartedly and committing our ways to, the, to God. But in this story um, about Johnny, Johnny never could do anything wrong. I don't know if you've ever known any children like that. Their moms and dads never would admit that any that they could do any wrong. Well, Johnny uh, always got his way. And Johnny one day was in Sunday school. And little Johnny, this is not anybody that we know, by the way. Um, 
it's just a, a, uh, an, a an example. And so uh, the name, as far as the name, but little Johnny um, was misbehaving in, um, in Sunday school and his teacher um, corrected him with a pretty strong correction, which he needed. And um, and then mom and dad got mad and mom and dad walked away from church and eventually divorced God because little Johnny always had to be right. Well, how many of us know that little Johnny is not always right? And sometimes you guys, we need to ask God, God, have I committed my family to you? Because you know, it's not just about what I want or what I think. It's about what God is preparing for each of their lives. What God has taken in and they were when they were children and then growing them to be who they are as an adult. It's important that as we commit our ways to God, that we are committing our family to him. And our family can't be first. Imagine that, you know, because we love our families and we want to put our families first. But God has to be first. Our ways have to be committed to him first. Because if not, we will wind up just like Johnny's, little Johnny's family. We will walk away from God when our family is not healthy or when someone treats us wrong. We will walk away and and not have that strong unit of um godliness and the things that God stresses continually in his word to wholeheartedly commit our ways to him and every commandment that he has given in his word we're to obey we're not to make excuses for we are to discipline we are to do every single thing that we can in the best possible way that we can but guys we can't do that without God helping us along the way and that scripture just is continuing to ring in my mind, trust him, obey him, wholeheartedly commit our ways to him. If we put him first, it says in Proverbs chapter uh, 5, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3, sorry, chapter 16, verse 3, it says, commit to the Lord whatever you do and your plans will succeed. And see, our families can't be first. God has to be first. We can't make excuses for the things that we've done wrong. We can't make excuses for things that our families have done or our children have done. But we wholeheartedly have to teach them. It's never too late. May, have we made mistakes in our past? Oh my goodness, yes. I have raised five. I have made mistakes. I probably still make mistakes today. But you know what? There's nothing more that I desire is for my family to know him and to follow his word and to obey him and to commit their ways truly and wholeheartedly to him. Because in these last days, that is the only thing, it's the only thing that's going to matter. When riots are going on in our streets, when our children come to us and they don't understand all the things that's going on in our nation and in our world, we can tell them what the scripture says. And all the whens and the buts and the ifs are the conditions that God says in his word. I will bless you and I will take care of you. And I will bless your children and your children's children. And I will be God of the city. And those are with conditions that we obey him. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to disappoint God. And I think that as he looks around our world today, he is so disappointed. I think that God is just the God that he was in Noah's day and in Lot's day. And I think that he just wants us to be reminded of the scriptures today that are read in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Trust him in all your ways and commit to him. And teach your children and tell them over and over and over and over what God's word says. There's no book that we can ever read to our children that are as important as the book of the the books of the Bible. 
There is no other stories that we can tell them that's important for them to know. And asking God for those divine moments, those divine appointments with our family that doesn't know him, those divine moments um, that we can speak into their lives, not to condemn them, but to help them recognize what God's word says and what is truth. Because God's word is truth, folks. It is truth. And there's coming a day, there's coming a day that each of us will stand alone before God. And I know I don't want him to be disappointed in me. And I know that you don't want him to be disappointed in you. But as I look across America and the news flashes all of the riots in the streets, and I look at the phones held up in the cities that people are putting graffiti all over history. People are destroying buildings and destroying each other and throwing things and, and hurting people when they should be loving them because that's the commandments of God is to love. And I just want to remind you that these scriptures... If we put him first wholeheartedly, our families will line up. Our cities will line up. Our nation will line up. Our world will line up. And people will come together. But it has to start in the home. It doesn't matter how old your children are, whether they're young, whether they're babies, or whether they're adults. Our children need to know what's in the Word of God. And it is important that when we mess up, when we say something that maybe is not agreeable with God's Word or our attitudes get, get over on us, it's important that we ask for forgiveness. It's important that we set things in order with them. It's important that when, when we recognize uh, an era in their lives or in their ways or an area that they're struggling in, it's important that as parents and as aunts and as grandparents and great-grandparents, as uncles and aunts and, and people in, in, in the neighborhood and these children and these uh, young adults, that we are responsible to show them the way. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's impossible for them to find their way on a road that's covered up. When we went to Tennessee, the paths that we took up in the mountains were clearly marked. But sometimes there were little paths off to the side that we could have easily taken. And you know what? This is what I feel the children and young adults in our nation has done. And, and not only them, but adults, because we also see adults just acting really out of their minds. But you know what? As a Christian, it is our responsibility. As I was watching the governor go over his mandates and recommendations yesterday, it just makes my skin crawl. And it gets I get so uh, angry with people's comments as they're posting and as they're posting. And I just was like, turn off the comments. So I turned off the comments for a while. And I'm like, God, no, no, I'm not turning off the comments because I am going to use this platform to talk about you. And you know what? I don't know if anybody went back and read them, but they were put out there because I know that's what God wants us to do. Not to be ugly and not to down anyone, but to help them to recognize when they were talking about someone commented the deaths. And what about the deaths? The deaths are everybody dies about, you know, for, from car wrecks and this and that. And, and, and so what about all the other deaths? And I just commented, you know, the most important thing about this comment is that if death comes for you, where are you going to spend eternity? And that's really what God is telling us in these scriptures in Deuteronomy. Where are you going to spend eternity? Where's our children going to spend eternity? At the end of the day, are we responsible because we didn't teach them? We didn't show them the ways. Yes, God forgives us. He forgives us for all the wrong things that we've done or the times that we have failed. But we can't continue to fail and say, I'm sorry, and never do anything about it. But we have to continue to push forward, 
to ask God, God, be the God of our city, but be the God of my family. Be my God. Be my God first. Be the God that, that I am committing wholeheartedly to you. Will you ask him to do that with you today? Let's just ask God, God, be the God wholeheartedly to me. And Father, we just come to you right now. And Father, first we ask your forgiveness, God, for our nation. Father, for the times that we personally have failed you. Father, forgive us. And God, we ask for our families that you would save them. God, help us to be the example that you need us to be. Help us as we commit our whole uh, commit wholeheartedly, Father, to you and to your commands and your word. God, that we can teach them everything that you want us to teach them. That we can be the example that you want us to be. Help us, God, to be everything that you have called us to be. God, to never let our guard down, but to use every opportunity as a divine appointment from you, Jesus. God, save our families. And God, help us to commit to your ways, Lord. Remind us, God, every day as we're going and as we're coming, as we're sitting and as we're lying, as we're exiting and entering, God, as we are playing and as we're serious, Father, with you. Remind us how important it is, Lord Jesus, to take that moment with you and commit to you daily our hearts so that you can teach us, so that you can save our nation and save our world, Father. Help us to line and prioritize our, our lives with your commands, God, that we put you first. And then when things around us fail, we're never going to leave you, Father, because we have committed wholeheartedly to you. But in that, God, we are teaching our families we're teaching our children, we're teaching our nieces and our nephews and our co-workers and the adults who we come in contact with. Father, we're teaching them to commit their ways and to trust in you, God, not to put our trust in everyone else around us, not to put our trust in the government or those over us, but God, wholeheartedly be obedient, not rebellious, to teach others your ways, Father. Thank you for in this great nation of America that we still have the freedom to worship you. And I give you glory and I give you praise in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. And um, I know that, you know, my husband tells me all the time, you get a little emotional. Well, I do. I get emotional when I see everything around me. People not serving God and people being complacent and people looking for answers in all the other places. When God says, hmm, commit our ways to him. Give our families to him, but never put them above him. But he says, teach them his ways. And we do that by living that shining example and taking every opportunity that we can to show his love and his commitment in Jesus' name. Thank you for coming today.